How much of a deep connection can I have with my wife and how can I grow it deeper? How much of a deep connection and presence can I have with my new daughter? How much money can I make with the least amount of effort by standing in the thing that I'm innately good at that I can't train another human being on the planet to do? How can I make that happen, embody that, and model that for every fucking human on the planet? Becoming Da Vinci. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. The Becoming Da Vinci Show is sponsored by The Kinetic Experience, where entrepreneurs go to have even more success and more fun in their business and life. Becoming Da Vinci. Da Vinci. So to learn more about The Becoming Da Vinci Show, visit us at www.becomingdavinciShow.com where you can learn all sorts of stuff about Leonardo da Vinci and what we are doing to correlate his life and his example with modern-day entrepreneurs and self-directed learning. Becoming da Vinci. Da Vinci, da Vinci. <laughs> I'm Abe Nadimi, and I'm here today with... Janica Morton. And our wonderful friend and a rebel beyond all rebels. Mm-hmm. You going to say your name here. Oh, Anthony John Amex. <laughs> We'd love to call him AJ. Can't even get that right. I got to rebel against the Yeah, you saw that. You're like, I'm not going to do it right now. I don't want to do it. So he's actually the first person I've ever seen being called by a keynote speaker to do something. He's like, nope. (laughs) It's like, come on, man. Like, just write some stuff down. He's like, no. And I was sitting there looking at him, and I was like, but that's the guy who invited you. He was like, I didn't want to do it. (laughs) I love him. Not the wisest move, but um, it was an authority play. So, you know, fuck it. Rebel, 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 rebel. So I'm really excited to get started. Um, obviously, this is the Becoming Da Vinci show, episode number, I don't even know. So <laughs> the goal of this episode is to, to have you share with us thoughts around the things that define Leonardo da Vinci in his time. So one little section out of Walter Isaac, Isaacson's book, Leonardo da Vinci, is this one paragraph that I'd like to read to you and then kind of get your thoughts on it. And then we'll dive in. Sure. Is that cool? Yeah. So the 15th century of Leonardo and Columbus and Gutenberg was a time of innovation, exploration, and the spread of knowledge by new technologies. That was a weird pause there. I'm sorry, guys. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) In short, it was a time like our own. That is why we have so much to learn from Leonardo. His ability to combine art, science, technology, the humanities, and an imagination remains an imagination remains an enduring recipe for creativity. So, too, was his ease at being a bit of a misfit, illegitimate, gay, vegetarian, left-handed, easily distracted, and at times heretical. What is that? What what do you think about when you hear that? I know you've listened to every episode of ours, and so you've heard that before. (laughs) But let's just imagine this is the first time you heard that. Sure. Sure. So what do I think about? I think about the first thing that comes to mind is like Leonardo just being a dude. He's just Mm. doing his thing thizzle. Like just doing him without regard of what's right, that's what's good, wrong. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. He's so just people are like, well, who is he? He's a dude doing his thing, using his talents to serve humanity in the way that he knew how. Hmm. He's, he's all of that's those awesome. things and he's none of those things. That's awesome. That's a good way to answer that. I like that answer. Um, Janica, you want to get us started on sure. your favorite topic ever? My favorite topic ever. I have lots of favorites. So we have these five things that we feel come from what we're studying with Leonardo. We have self-directed learning, which we're big about, the misfits rebels, which love, curiosity, innovation, and imagination. So for you, give us examples of how self-directed learning has impacted your journey in your life. So self-directed learning has, Mm -hmm. for me, radically changed my life. Reason being is... Do you guys know what my major is in, from university? I'm going to act like I forgot. I have no idea. You can say. You, don't, you can remember. Oh, it's in music? No, it's okay. not. It's art. <laughs> okay, okay. Bachelor art. of Fine Art. Really? Okay. Yep. <laughs> that was my degree, art. But I do nothing uh, with art. I mean, I guess I do, kind of, but I don't. You know, like I'm not a photographer. I'm not a videographer. So everything that I get paid to do from psychology to marketing to business has been completely self-directed learning. Yeah. And I'd be willing to bet... I could go toe-to-toe with any psychologist on the planet, and my self-directed education would get results faster than many certified psychologists. That's awesome. So you just said something interesting, though. You said, I don't actually do art. But do you think what you do is art? It is. It's, it, it can be if I allow it to be. So what does art mean? So... I don't know what Webster, I don't want to get like into I don't know really what I don't know what Webster's definition of right. art is, but I would just say for me, art is expression. Right. So then you do that every day. For sure. 
like my social media posts are expression. My videos are yeah. expression. You guys have been to my live events. They're pure expression. So at some level, yes, everything I do is art. And at another level, it's not. That's it. That's, that's the beautiful part. Mm. So people ask me all the time if I miss being an engineer. I'm like, well, I'm doing engineering all the time. Because to me, the def- definition of engineering is problem solving. So like, and, and I got asked this a lot at Social Smoke. Like, you miss being an engineer. I, that's all we were doing here is trying to solve a problem. We, we made up a problem. Now we're trying to solve our own problem <laughs> and, and figure out a way to do it in a way that's unique to the client. And I think that's a really interesting point that you didn't leave necessarily art. It's sure. still part of you. and sure. just showing 100%. in a different format. Than, than, than but something. I guess my challenge with art is you come into the game of like, well, how do you package it and sell it in the game of direct sales? Mm-hmm. How do you scale it? When Da Vinci, if you look at his ideas, did he create uh, the submarine or the catapult or this or that invention because he wanted to scale it? Hell or, no. Or was it just a pure expression that was coming through him at the time? It was he was such a curious soul that he just needed to know how it worked. Exactly. He didn't even finish it. Most Never, of his yeah. work was just, I've worked out the idea on paper. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. That's right? exactly right. He's it, Like in the Colby test, I'm convinced if he took it on that last one on the implementer, it's implementer, right? The or, last the, one. Or, or the maintainer. The main, yeah. He would be like really low, like a one or two. He mm-hmm. visualizes it. He's done. He doesn't even need to put it together. Yep. Yeah, I love that. Like in studying him, I, that clicked in my head too. I was talking with the owner of Communion, which is another co-working space in Richardson, Texas. And I was asking him, his name's Tim, Tim Kell. I was like, yo, Tim, like, what is your kind of challenge you're working on for next year? And he's like, man, I'm, I'm trying to like just kind of stay more in my strengths and get back to discipline. Because his strength is like launching businesses, getting them like, like if it was a boat was his analogy, a boat. You're like floating in the water, not like sunk, but like, you know, you're further in the water, (laughs) right? And then you give it gas and you you have lots Mm. of momentum until you get up on plane. And now it's just like, we can go. His gift is taking a business and getting it up on even plane and going. But once it's out of the water, he's like, I'm I'm, I'm done. I'm bored. So he's like, I just want to leverage (laughs) doing that, but building the team around him that will take care of the maintenance uh, piece of it because that's not his gift. Yeah. And he's been doing the both of those pieces for many years now, too, for for sure. And he's like, I'm just kind of getting burned out. But that's all self awareness. Yes, hundred percent. To 100%. actually know, and and finally, I would just say it's it's awesome to know that you are not that person. And that took a long time for me to to finally accept the fact. Well, I'm just not that person to implement certain things. Just not that. Um, and instead of trying to figure out how I could do those things and shore up a weakness, essentially, say I'm not going to do them. I got to find a team member that'll do it. Or if I'll do it, I have to know that I'm just grit and bearing it for a while. And it's okay that I struggle with it. I, it's okay that I don't like it because I know I'm going to find somebody else that wants to do this and loves to do it. Mm-hmm. And one of the weirdest moments in a conversation I had was actually with my friend Heather. She's um, an accountant in Fort Worth. So I'm definitely calling you out on this one. And she was telling me a story about her work. And she said, I love it. I do the same thing over and over and over and it's very like structured and repetitive. And I was, I, it was the first time I was like, but you like that? She's like, oh, I love it. Bleh. I don't like it when things change on me. And I was like, oh my God, there's a weirdo. That's like my For health. everything. Huh? That's hell. That's like my version of hell. For sure. Oh, I thought you said that's health. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no. For all three of us. No, Tim, it's- Tim and I were talking about this the other day. So he feels guilty going to the people like your friend Heather. Yes. And being like. I don't want to give, I hate doing this stuff. So I really don't want to give it to you exactly. because I'm putting, and, but they're like, Oh no, no, please, I want it. Please give it to me. Like it edifies me. Thank uh. you. please. So it's a huge awareness for those of you who are like Mr. Nadimi or Janica or maybe myself or Robert. I like how right? I got the Mr. And I like it too. I think that's going to be just me. Your old Mowgli Nadimi, Mr. <laughs> Mowgli. <laughs> Mowgli. <Nadimi. Okay. laughs> so, but here's the whole point is the big takeaway is if you're a visionary, right? If you're watching this and you're a visionary, you love strategy, you don't like maintenance mode, delegate it out and it's actually you giving someone their mm-hmm. gift and allowing them to leverage their talent and this is the beauty of teamwork. Absolutely. Perfect. It's yes. true. So misfits or rebel? Mm. <laughs> this is an awesome one. Yes or no? Do you identify as a misfit and or rebel? <laughs> I really don't. I, I, when I knew that's why I laughed. I was like, he's not going to play along. I would like to. I mean, but why, like, yeah, but why not though? 
Maybe I am, but I don't know. I like I'm in a phase of life where I'm like, I I wish somebody could come into my life and put a box around me, and say, "Hey, you're an iPhone." And I'm like, "Cool, I know how to sell an iPhone." Uh, you want yeah. But if you if you can't package that, it's like, how do you scale that when you can't put words mm -hmm. around it? Isn't he the premise of our whole show, and he's yes, now he saying is. this shit? Fuck him. Uh, what happened to your PC? I'm doing good over here. <laughs> you are really doing good. Because you're making Abel off off skelter. <laughs> so, so I guess, it, it, and, and we had actually discussed this as we were writing out this question, which is, it's it might be difficult to be called a misfit or a rebel. It's hard for someone maybe to call themselves a misfit or a rebel because they're just like, well, I'm just being me. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I think it might be one of those concepts. For sure. And I, I, and I kind of rail a one on, on the thought leader one. It's like, I'm a thought leader. I'm like, who said? Right? Shouldn't that be something that somebody else says about you? Right? Then I'm humble. Like, I'm super humble. Like, that's the thing. I think there's certain characteristics that we can never claim. And one of them is if you read the book um, by Tim Grover, he was the athletic trainer of Michael Jordan. And he has three different, uh, three different designations. And the last one, I believe, is cleaner. And so he gets people in the audience to raise their hand. Like, are you this? Are you a closer? Are you a cleaner? And the ones that are cleaners, he's like, you know, he just starts making fun of them. He said, that's something that you get called. Because if you're that person, you still think there's work to be done. You're still there because you, you, you haven't done enough. And so you cannot ever designate yourself as these things. And I think there's a whole series of them. And I think Misfit and Rebel might be one too. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Yet uh, there's probably a paradox in it as always. Possibly. There where, definitely is. Where if I'm like, how dare you say that you're humble? You can't put that label on yourself. Well, maybe there's a piece of me that requires healing where I can just be like, hmm, glad you're humble. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think so. I don't know. Or even taking an inner look at myself and be like, what in me is creating a story that they can't be humble? No, it's not that. It's just I'm just thinking, like, can, can someone – Beside myself, I don't know most men that can designate themselves as like the world's sexiest man alive for the year. But because that's how, pe especially after the <laughs> gift I sent you, I'm trying to keep the straight face. I know, face. I know, right? <laughs> but like People Magazine designates that, right? Or mm -hmm. Time or whatever designates that. I don't think you can start designating that stuff. But anyway, so Misfit and Rebel. So I don't, I don't want to go yeah, crazy. No. So can you give us examples of how you would define yourself as a rebel? Well. I, I swear a lot. Um, maybe that's rebellious. To me, it's expression and it's fun. By I, a lot, he's being very modest. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I usually don't wear suits. Um, I like colors. If you tell me I have to wear a certain thing, I probably won't. I will probably find my own expression in that realm. Mm. Um, Purposely? Mm -hmm. Not not mm -hmm. so. If I say hey, I'm, not purposefully. I'm not doing it purposefully. It's just like uh -huh, if so. I feel like I want to express this way, let me express that way. Okay. Within the, I that's now a misfit. within the confines right. of the culture, like I still want to honor the culture. Okay, that's that's what okay. I was trying to drive at. I yep. still I, I mean, who am I to be arrogant enough to be like, no, the world must revolve around me. That's right. No, I mean I, I'm still honoring the culture. I'm still honoring people's values. If I want to go play with those people or this culture, but at the same time, I do want to this express who I am within the confines of that culture. Oh, I love that. So, do you think you've always been that way? No, I used to follow the rules to a T to mm -hmm. succeed and get praise. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was the same way, and that's why when I when we were going through this, I just knew exactly where you were at with it because you get to the point where you're like, okay, I can actually be me. Yeah, for sure. And, and then people take it as you're rebelling. Why are you rebelling? You never didn't know you used to do this or this or this. Sure. And once you set that expression, then all of a sudden they have to change and deal with it. Sure. And you get labeled a rebel. <laughs> now, the other thing that I'm experiencing is the principle of the pendulum. Are you familiar with this? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, tell us. So if we're a rule follower and maybe we are not like legitimately not ingrained that way by God, spirit, universe, everybody's different. Some, some people are, by the way. Some people are very much want to follow the rules and they are made to be that way and thank the Lord for those types of people. Right. Right. But some aren't. So for those of us who weren't born with that impression and due to our conditioning or upbringing or whatever, we were trying to follow a set of rules – we operated over here, and then once we're like had enough of this, we usually swing. If we were way over here on the extreme, the pendulum is going to swing usually to the other extreme. But I don't believe it has to. I mean, I get that that's physics, that we can right. be like, okay, pendulum, let it go. You know, if it was way over here, then it's going to swing this far over there, and it's going to keep swinging. Eventually, on its journey, it will get and maintain balance and come to a stop. But we're humans. Yeah. We're creators of our reality. So if I want to, if I can become aware that my pendulum is over here, I don't have to go over here. That's a choice. Usually it does, but it's a choice. Mm-hmm. I could be like, oh no, I just want to dance here. And I could choose that and I could be that, right? So there's one where I'm like, I'm following the rules. There's, for me, there has been a period of life where I did go to the extreme. I went, I went from being more like warrior, tyrant, you obey my every command. And if you don't, get out. I don't mm-hmm. have time for you. Like... I'm working on this thing. Follow. If you don't, go. I don't, got time. I, don't want, I don't want your feedback. Whatever. Well, after I burned relationships, then I was like, huh, I'm an asshole. <laughs> Maybe it's not working for me so well. <laughs> I'm, getting, yeah. I'm getting results in the game of, of, for me at that time, it was, it was music, being a professional musician. Played that game very well, got record offers, et cetera, but I did burn all my relationships to the ground. So then I was like, healer, let me be the nice dude. Let me get trampled on and just hopefully I can just be so nice to you that you're going to love me and give me praise and admiration. And then what happened is I learned nice guys don't get laid or paid. <laughs> Very critical things. <laughs> Good guys do. Good guys. That was, that's, Good and there's a difference between yes. being warrior, asshole, my way, their highway tyrant, nice guy, healer, and in the middle ground, good guy. Right. Where I can listen to you. I can be compassionate. I can be courageous. I can be strong, yet I can be vulnerable and I can be weak. Vulnerable. But I also can set boundaries when boundaries need to be established. So what made you change? Feedback. So you were, um, so you would say as a, as a child in your teenage years, I don't know, to when do you feel like you were not a misfit, not a rebel, really trying to conform? all of a sudden you started realizing like nah, college all the way into so about college, college sophomore year and that's insane right so when you think back on 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 life you're like wow 23 years of my life 22 years whatever yeah i've been 21 21 21 years 20 so what started 20, then 20. to help you realize that it was okay for you to be different i, di- I didn't realize it's okay to be different i um well, i was what I, made you rebel i guess or misfit become a mystery. So I was in college. I thought I wanted to do CSI. Can you guys imagine me doing fucking CSI as like a fucking police officer? <laughs> no, no. So I was studying sociology. <laughs> I can imagine you being the guy to tackle the guys down, but other than the, like going around with the microscope, no, I don't no. see that. So I thought it would be a cool job, right? And so I was like, I'm going to go study sociology and you find these pieces of the puzzle and it could be really awesome. Well, like my, I think it was like the beginning of my sophomore year, I went and talked with the sociology professor, one of the guys, and I was like, yo, I want to do the CSI thing. And he was like, well, yeah, you have to have a sociology degree, but you got to be a police officer. And I was like, well, hold up. Nobody told me that. He's like, yeah, you got to be a police officer for a certain time, and there you got to work your way through the ranks, and then you can finally get there. And I'm like, I'm out. There's yeah. rules I'm to out. the game. I'm out. I, I just wanted to do that thing. Right. I can't do the thing. There's a rule. No, I'm out. So I was like, well, what do I do? So you I went, were an art major still at this point. I was a sociology major at oh, that sociology. point. Oh, sociology. Okay. So, so then, then I went back to my roots, which was art. I've always yeah. loved art. Right? So my mother's side of the family is very artistic. My grandmother is a very, very good painter. Um, like ridiculously very good painter of portraits, captures like light in people's eyes. Very, very good. She was um, an art director for one of the major companies here in Dallas. She was an uh, art director for Bell Helicopter. A lot of the calendars back in the 80s, 90s, she like all of the stuff that yeah. you worked at Bell and she, like all the photos. So yeah. she creative directed all of those was like the person that's hanging, uh, you know, the photographers hanging out of the helicopters are taking shots. And she's the guy on the guy's shoulder being like, wait, wait, wait now, 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 
take that's the shot. Awesome. That's you know, awesome. that was. So awesome. must have, we must have seen a lot of her work. Probably, I, I probably seen probably. a lot of her work. Probably. So, but my dad's side of the family was very much like, you know, be the man, East Texan construction, you know, hunt, fish, kill things, drive big trucks, kind of. Not really. That's very exaggeration. But we'll go with the <laughs> exaggeration for hyperbole. So it was like, well, in order to be the dude and get love, then be this dude, right? If you go to art, nobody understands you. So in college, I made that decision. I guess I'm going to go to art. So then I went down the art path. That led me into, I mean, we we're doing music at the time, but in the summer of, um, was it Christmas? I think it was Christmas movement. No, it was the summer because I was like in summer class my sophomore year. I read a music business book, and I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And I, that was like the mental switch in my mind where we went from being like a hobby to like actually getting paid doing that. And then do you guys hear music. like the Da Vinci coming out here? Oh, totally. Right? Yeah. That's the interesting thing. So you sign off all your posts with Ray John Rebel. I have in the past. Yes. Well, you have in the past. That's right. I've experienced a lot of those posts. What does that mean to you? And what do you want people to feel when they read that? I'm really glad you asked that question. So I, I, for me at the beginning of Rage on Rebel, Rage, people are like, oh, he's just an angry guy, right? He's just a, a ginger who's angry and who wants to just, ah, and force his way through life. That's not the case. I think there's plenty of dudes out there and there's plenty of women who are like, force, hustle, grind, rah, 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 rah. There's enough of that. If you also look up another definition of rage, it's, uh, I don't know it verbatim, but essentially it's, it's passion, just using passion to transmute mm. things. So the idea of rage on is use your passion to fuel transformation to create life on your terms. Now the problem with Rage on Rebel is society is like rage, angry. Just another guy just telling everybody to rah, rah, rah and change and be forced your way through life. And my target market, that's what they took it to mean. And that's why I quit using it because I was, that was pushing actually my target market away because my target market, they've already done a lot of deep work. They're already like spent a lot of money on personal development. And so when they see somebody who's like, oh, rage your way, be angry for change. I don't want that. I've done that. I've burnt my entire life to the ground. I don't want any part of that. You're like that other dude. You're like this, that guy. You're like this organization. So then I was like, ah, thank you so much for the feedback. I'm going to quit using that because here's what I really meant it to be. He's like, man, I've never – that that message, the tran- using right. passion to transmute change, that resonates with me. But I did not understand that's what that meant can because I, society says this word means anger. Can I sh- – when I read it the first time, I thought it was do something with purpose is awesome. what you meant with it. Awesome. I never got the angry part. Awesome. That's so, but, weird. but here's the yeah. business lesson, right? So here's the business lesson. We sometimes go and put words out there and phrases out there. It's not really, ultimately it doesn't matter what AJ meant for you to say here, right? It's no. all about what his customer or target client mm-hmm. interpreted it. And in this case, he figured out that it was not really conducive to the direction that he wanted to take the company and serve the clients. And if it was pushing away the people that you want to serve, then, then you need to change. And that's beautiful that he didn't stay on it. Right. He wasn't like, no, I'm going to make this my mission in life is to change the way everybody thinks of the word rage, because that's not really what his purpose is. You didn't wake up in the morning going, I need to change the word rage. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a really interesting point. So um, you want to do. But the other thing that connects that with what you meant by it, with a passion through transformation, passion with transformation, totally Da Vinci right there. Like as you were describing it, that was his life. He was total raging rebel. Love it. (laughs) <laughs> so, okay, one of my favorite things, and it's something I, I asked my kids when they were little every day, what are you curious about right now? What am I curious about right now? How good can I stand it? That's what I'm curious about right now. Mm. Wow. How much of a deep connection can I have with my wife, and how can I grow it deeper? How much of a deep connection and presence can I have with my new daughter? How much money can I make with the least amount of effort by standing in the thing that I'm innately good at that I can't train another human being on the planet to do? How can I make that happen, embody that, and model that for every fucking human on the planet? Awesome. So, so, wow. So how do you even go about that process? Do you know yet? Is it just Part of it is, so there's a great author that I, I have a lot of respect for, if you guys haven't read him. Um, it's Gay Hendricks. Mm-hmm. So he has two books I'd highly recommend. 
uh, if you haven't read them. One's called The Big Leap, and the other one is his new book. Uh, I pre-ordered it. I don't even know. I assume it's out on Amazon. I pre-ordered it, so it came in, but it's called The Joy of Genius. Mm -hmm. Have you read it yet? No, but I, I saw it. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Great book. And it's really all about this concept of like, how do you spend more and more time of what he calls is your genius, not your level of excellence. Excellence is something that I've learned to be good at. I'm, I am, I'm excellent at understanding the game of social media marketing. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of hours, like more than 10,000 to learn that game, direct response marketing, et cetera. But that's my zone of excellence. You guys have been to my event, the uprising that we do once a quarter. That is my genius. I can't train another human being on the planet to show yeah. up how I show up for that event. During my coaching calls, there's moments when I can show up as that expression of me in those events. And I know this is very like elusive for you listening, and it's very ethereal, but fuck it, we're going to stay with it. <laughs> those moments, I want to spend more and more and more time in. So my genius that I'm learning is helping people break through the thing that they don't know what is keeping them stuck. All they know is I feel stuck, but I don't know what it is. And I'm like, cool. I don't know what it is either, but give me 30 days and I will find it. Guaranteed. Period. And sometimes an hour. And, and sometimes <laughs> yeah, an hour. Give usually, me up to 30 days. Usually it, it's way less than 30 <laughs> right, days. Right, for sure. But my genius, I think, is bringing people into that fire of transformation. Sometimes it's a very loving experience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a very painful experience. I'm unattached to whatever that person's experiencing. My job is just showing up as the mirror to help them see and let the fire completely transform them. And since I'm learning that I'm able to hold the space in the container for that, they're transformed and they feel safe in the fire. Even though they're, most of them are scared to death to go into the fire. That is definitely his zone of genius. And what's interesting is you, you, you said, how do I also scale that? Yeah. And that's where the, that's where it gets interesting. That's it's, it is a, it's very hard. And especially if you're not a process of systems person, which I know that's something that you said you struggle with sure. in the past, then, then it's really tricky. It's, it's really hyper tricky. Cause then you're like, buy, die, but how, right? The process is easy for me, actually. Um, I, I, I've actually learned I am pretty pro process. Like I, I'll show you my processes here in a second. But what's hard is scaling that. He doesn't like my flow charts though. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> the, the hard part is scaling that where people listen. Because most people don't want to admit the truth. And they need you to be there. Correct. Right? But they don't want to admit it. Because to admit it means that their deepest fears and beliefs about themselves are true. So how do you create a marketing message that's scalable that people don't want to hear? <laughs> well, the other part of that is that maybe in this particular business, you cannot become McDonald's. Your version of sure. scalable is going to be different. True. So, yeah, it's limited. And, and that's important too. And that's what we talk about in our Kinetic Canvas stuff, which is what is your business model? What is your vision? And sometimes the vision doesn't match the model. Because if you came in and said, well, I'm going to serve 100 million people a year. Exactly. Uh, no, 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 no. Not this way. In, no. in audio format, yes, or something, something. Maybe. But not in this other format. It's yeah. not possible because somebody at some point needs some minutes of your time. Exactly. Then so the minute that you start swapping time uh, for money, then there's immediately 1,440 minutes in a day. Exactly. And you start, cap you sure. start capping. And this is what aggravates me about the entrepreneurial space at this moment. So then let's go to the next question. How do you feel like you're being innovative in your life and now? And I feel like that's mm. interesting. Yeah. Because now you're, now you're saying I'm frustrated with the space. And sure, surely knowing you, you're thinking of how you can innovate. I am, of course. So I'm frustrated by the space because the space says you shouldn't trade hours for dollars. Go ahead. Lots of people like, oh, you can't scale that to 10 million. You can't sell it to 50 million. You can't sell it to 100 million. You can't sell it to a billion and sell. You can't create a business or you shouldn't create a business where you're having to trade hours for dollars. At least in the expert industry, that is kind of what, you know, just create a course, yeah. do something at large, blah, blah, blah. Evergreen. evergreen. Make it all evergreen. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not against evergreen funnels and I'm not against marketing. Like mm -hmm. I love marketing, right? It's getting the message out. So where I'm at is embracing that I do trade hours for dollars and I'm okay with that. And so when someone tells me, well, you shouldn't do that. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. That's my genius at the moment. Why can't I trade hours for dollars? There's nothing wrong with that. 
anybody who would tell you that means they never stepped back and said, what are you wanting to create? Yes. And I think that's the, they, these are the fundamental questions that lots of consultants and client, uh, coaches do not ask. What are you actually building? Right? Mm -hmm. So somebody can watch this podcast and say, this is total, or show is like, it's total ridiculous because they don't have the right lighting or they don't have, look how they're holding the mics. Why don't they have this thing? And that's not what we're creating though. And there's a baby in the picture. That's there's so a baby. Well, you know what? Yeah. Maybe some people don't like that, but we're a family friendly business, right? And so if they don't know what we are going to create, then how can they grade what our performance is? And how can we even grade what our performance mm -hmm. is? Because we never define what our vision is, hypothetically, mm -hmm. right? And that's really key. Because if you came and said, man, I'm really struggling, I'm selling time for money, and I've heard I shouldn't do that. And I would say, but what are you wanting to build? And you're like, well, I just want to make 50 people happy as hell. Then my next question would be like, can you serve 50 people in a year in your current trading time for money? And you'd say, yes. Fuck everybody else. Exactly. That's the conclusion I came to. Yes. Yeah. But no, now on the flip side, then the other part is that you say, well, I want to serve people with my time, but I also want to become a billion dollar company and never work. I could say, well, you still could probably be a billion dollar company because you just need to charge 10 million a client or whatever. Sure. Right. Sure. But. Sure. And you could do that. If you bring, but, but, if you, you but you got to work. If you bring enough value. That's right. You sure could. You could do that. There are people that charge a million plus dollars a yes. year to be coaches and consultants. Yes. Easily. Yes. So, and how are you, so you, in your form of innovation in the space right now, and speci specifically to some of your clients, which are other consultants and coaches, is to what? Push back on this? Or this little conversation we Did, just had? Yeah, just to, to push back on it. Like if that's where you're called, you know, rather than listening to the industry where who's like, create a course scale at large, you know, do it where you can, don't have to work anymore. What if you do want to work? Exactly. <laughs> There's no right or wrong. There's many paths up the mountain. It's all relative. And so it's whatever path that you want to choose, mm -hmm. choose it. You have the freedom to choose that just because they tell you, you have to do that. You don't. Whatever expression <laughs> wants to come through you, let it come through you. That's the book. And Rage on Rebel. Yeah. Right Rage there. on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll totally take it over now. Oh, I'm so going to, yeah, I'm going to use that all day long. Carry the torch of the Raging Rebels. Awesome. I that love it. Awesome. You want to, you want to, I, oh, I talk okay. too much. You do, yeah. No. Um, mm, what do you remember about your childhood imaginations? My childhood imaginations? None, actually. I can't remember anything like before the age of like 10, 11, or 12. For, I mean, very few, like maybe yeah. five things. But um, childhood imagination, I don't know. I can't remember it. Do you I, have I, a do, do you have an active imagination now? No, I don't. I don't think I have an active imagination. I'm very clear on what I want to experience, but if it's just like imagining fantasy worlds, mm -hmm. no. 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 Yeah, I'm the same even way. even for me like growing up, you know, I played soccer at a very high level growing up. I love the game of, of soccer. I visualized playing when I was a kid. Like I mm -hmm. visualized playing at a professional level, I didn't even know that was visualization back there, but it would just be me playing. And you know, I grew up on, a, you know, 48 acres in the middle of East Texas, but I would be out in the summertime every day after school is playing just me and the ball between my grandmother's house, my, my mom, and dad's house. I would kick the ball off the house, roll it off the thing. <laughs> oh, you were trees. that guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Like I, I played all the time. Sure. But in my mind, I was like at a totally different um, place than just in a little. So when you and your, you, you know, let's say you go back, you said, I remember 10, 10 years old and above, like when you and your, you and your friends used to go out in the woods, do something at any point where, excuse me, at any point were you imagining? No, not with friends. That we, you were, we were just, we were just playing, playing. We, like we were just experiencing mm -hmm. life. We're hunting squirrels, hunting rabbits. Sure. As we got older, we had, you know, all of us had jacked up blazers, Jeeps, trucks, and we'd go find a car hood and we would bolt a bucket seat on a car hood, tie it behind the truck, and we'd drag people through the field at three in the morning. <laughs> I mean, well, what is there to imagine? It's just like being the no, moment. Yeah, that's You're a, a boy. Run, boys, you know? yeah, boys just do. Like, awesome. There's no need for imagination then. <laughs> that's good. Well, we like asking this question because I think you're going to obviously experience it now with your daughter. And, and it's really interesting how, how much children are in imagination world. And it's, I, I see it in the four-year-old that we, that we have. And it's so cute, right? Like he will talk to us about stuff that obviously is not there, but he's like, he's sure. being Iron Man or he's being whatever. I think it's awesome. So the kinetic journey, as, as I described Leonardo Strait's being 
Innovative, wildly imaginative, passionately curious, creative across multiple disciplines, experimental, observative, 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 mm. I, I, horrible, I'm so bad, strong will and highly ambitious. What comes to mind as you think back on your vision or your version of the my kinetic journey through entrepreneurship or in entrepreneurship? I'm not understanding the question. <laughs> it's all over the place. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me simplify it. I'm gonna, yeah, you want to simplify it? <laughs> okay, so do you even know what my kinetic journey is? No. Represents. I, I've seen the hashtag. Okay. I have an assumption that it's about people creating their own version of whatever it is they want to experience, and they're on their journey of expressing their that. journey of expression through entrepreneurship. Awesome. That's what it is. So, uh, in those traits that Leonardo has. Um, how can you apply them to your version of your journey through entrepreneurship? I think for me, it's to um, drop the story of it has to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. I think so oftentimes we, we look outside our current business models to other people who are further down the road in our industries than we are. And, we, you know, people say don't, you know, compare, yeah. right? Don't compare and despair, essentially but rather compare and dare. We want to use like personal development adages. Compare and you dare. You couldn't even say that without laughing. I know. <laughs> Your whole voice, did you see his voice yeah, changed? I know. He's his like, whole energy like yeah. changed. It's so funny. <laughs> so if we, I feel like for me where I'm at, that's hindering my expression currently yeah. because I'm like, oh, I want to, I, I see these people who are winning in this. I would like to hit that target. Well, maybe I should do some version of that. So how can I innovate the message coming through me in that way, mm -hmm. so, you know, so it's not like I'm copying. It's almost modeling, but through an innovative lens. Mm -hmm. And there's value in that. And that took me from making, you know, not having a business to making $50,000 a year to then tweaking that and going from $50,000 a year to $150,000 a year. But to go to this place from where we're doing 150, where we want to go to do 250 next year, we want to go to 500. I think it's a totally different lens, mm -hmm. which is like, okay, I have the skill sets that I need. Now let it flow through me and I'm just going to innovate my me. I'm going to innovate exactly. me. I'm not yeah. going to innovate me compared to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So if I look at this dude, Da Vinci, I would, I would have to assume, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I could make the assumption that he didn't compare himself to the industry and he just allowed creation to flow through him. Maybe he did. Maybe he did hang out with Raphael, Mike, Michelangelo, right? The other Renaissance yeah. leaders. And maybe he, they were like, you know, like he got a pigeon letter or something, you know, he's like that fucking Michelangelo painted that damn cistern chapel. <laughs> I'm going to go small. Watch this Mona Lisa. And he created that little bitty paint. You know, I don't know. I don't even know what the time periods are, if they even line up. Right. So I may, <laughs> may completely yeah, lost. I have no idea either, by the <laughs> way. But you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like may maybe that, I don't know, but maybe he didn't. Maybe, you know, there wasn't social media and communication was like legitimately by a messenger on a horse right. or a pigeon or a falcon. Maybe, I don't know. Falcon. Or just gossip. I don't know. That made it way back yeah. to the to the land. And, and maybe it just took longer. And so maybe you just had more space to be yeah. able to allow expression to flow through. Or maybe it was just a choice. I don't know. But here's the whole point. It doesn't matter what happened. The lesson is just innovate yourself. That's where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. So that's your journey. Yes. So right now. So yes, th this hashtag is to show the behind the scenes of the creation of the entrepreneur. Awesome. And that we always publish something, but sure. there was a lot of stuff that happened behind the mm -hmm. scenes. Sure. That is the actual, if you really want to get into it, like that's the real fun part. Because once you release the product or you, re you release the blog, you're onto the next thing. And all of that, you need inspiration. You, you go through challenges. You have, I don't know, whatever, maybe self-doubt, introspection, looking at what's in the marketplace. All that other stuff that we usually don't see too much of. Yeah, And even if other people are showing it, right, we're just doing our version of it. Most people are showing their highlights. Exactly. I find those people who are willing to be vulnerable have more influence. Jesus talked about the meek inherit the earth. I believe this means those of us who are willing to be vulnerable have the most influence. <laughs> so if they're willing to share the dirt behind their journey of the my kinetic journey, mm -hmm. right? If they're willing to share that journey, it actually builds an audience along the way because you're not trying to lead in the old model of being an influencer or an expert or a leader of, hey, look at me. I have everything together. This is me on my little pedestal. Be like me. I have it all figured out. 
the people who are making change today in a massive way and they're creating a following along the way and they're, they're changing lives and they're adding value to the marketplace, they're just like, yo, this is where I'm at. <laughs> this is where I want to go. And uh, I'm going to share along the way. And these are all my fuck ups along the way. Learn from them or don't. Yeah. yeah. It's just sharing them. And that's like today we were sitting out there and we both realized, crap, we hadn't planned right. Like we should be documenting this as part of our kinetic journey with what we're doing. We didn't plan right. Just and I think simple. that's the beauty of Instagram stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, like from a marketing standpoint, from a strategy yeah, like standpoint. <laughs> yeah, like mine. Pee all over me. <laughs> <laughs> but using, you know, an Instagram story as a platform to share the daily journey of your MyKinetic journey mm-hmm. or experience. Which is it? Experience or journey? Journey. Okay. MyKinetic journey. Using Instagram stories to do that, that's mm-hmm. another way to build trust and respect with your audience in a yeah. very... Uh, and it's easy. I mean, I mean, we did it right yeah. before the thing. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's what we're also sharing with the members that were that are part of the. Well, anybody. I mean, it's a hashtag. Anybody can grab it and use it. Sure. That's the other part. Sure. Right. But the individuals that we're working with specifically, it's like, this is also for you. Sure. That you can do all of that stuff. You can yeah. reap the benefits of getting people involved in your story. Sure. And we wanted to include like the whole holistic. Like you have the the Thrive Five. We're we're working right. through this whole life wheel, and so really, an entrepreneur can't just focus on business. It's got to be all those components. And they show it. And and to show it, and so like you did the other day, talking sure. about your night of poop. Yes. <laughs> you know, sure. that's that's life. That sure. and that impacts your day and your clients the next day and everything. Sure. It's just the way. Why it is. can't an entrepreneur or a business owner only focus on the game of business? Why is it to their disadvantage to only do that? Oh, that's a whole, that's a whole episode. Oh, we need to do that one, but it's limiting. It's, it's, but it's not, it's just not even true. It's like only focusing on what you eat, but not what you breathe and not how much water you have. Like, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Right. So my friend, Jonathan Heston, I'll, I'll, I I wanted to simplify this for you because I feel like a lot of people say you should just focus on business and we kind of take it at surface level. And I think there's a lot of questions I had of like, well, why can't I, why can't I, why can't I, why can't I, who are you to tell me that I can't do that? And rebel. we look to all. we look to social media, and all we see is grind, 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 hustle, hustle, close deal, close deal, close deal, business, 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 magic bullet, magic bullet, magic, right. magic bullet, right? But the people who have sustainable success, whatever that is for them, different things for different people, they don't just focus on the game of business. Mm-hmm. They focus on like what I would call Thrive Five: faith, family, fitness, finance, and fun in that order. And if you only focus on business finance, which is the fourth cylinder, think of these five things as like a, like five cylinders in an engine, right? If you've ever driven a car with a blown cylinder, you know you 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 know cars. How does it how does it run? Oh, it's a horrible. It shakes. Can you can you like verbally communicate what that experience is like? No. <laughs> Okay. That's so embarrassing. How do you know how you so do that? Well, I didn't mean you had to like sound it out. I'm <laughs> just saying like, so it's like chugging along. It's like you're, you're pushing on the gas. You're like, Hey, you're supposed to go. Come on. Let's get some momentum. And you're, you're like stressing out and it's like barely moving. So there's moves. two forms like, of that. If you really you know, want to know, one of them is the cylinder doesn't fire because the spark plug is dead, for example. Sure. And it's just a weak performing engine. Yep. Because now it's dragging the, the rest of it down. Yep. Then you can get more advanced where you actually break the piston or you break the push rod. Yeah. So I know all that. Got a divorce stuff. going on in your marriage or about to get a divorce in your marriage. So now you actually have this thing that is literally wrecking the other parts of the engine. Yeah. It yep. doesn't slow you down. It can literally punch a hole through the side of the cylinder wall or through the block. Oil's gone. Car's dead. Done. Exactly. Beautiful. Destroyed. Perfect. Perfect analogy. So this is what happens when you focus on only one cylinder of what my good friend Jonathan Hessen calls the success engine. Thrive 5 is the engine of success. Faith, your ability to have confidence and certainty of self to create whatever you want to experience. Fitness, your, or your, your family, your ability to have connection with your wife, with your children, with the people that you care about, with your partner, with your business partner, whatever, humans in general. And then you have fitness, the game of your body, right? And then getting into the game of finance and then getting into the game of actually having fun by focusing and expanding those over a 30-day process. And I'm not talking about big targets. I'm just talking about things that expand your capacity in each one of the cylinders. You have a well-oiled engine that actually creates momentum, and it's so counterintuitive. But if you follow and focus on expanding your faith and your family and your fitness, the byproduct is actually when you go execute into the game of business, you make money easier Mm -hmm. because you have momentum. 
-hmm. But yet so oftentimes we're looking for the magic bullet and finance, 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 stand up, finance. And then we're, we're totally uh, doing the exact opposite of what we want. I love it. You want to you wanna read your favorite quote? Yes. Above all, Leonardo's relentless curiosity and experimentation should remind us of the importance of instilling in both ourselves and our children, not just receive knowledge, but a willingness to question it, to be imaginative, and like talented misfits and rebels in any era, to think different. So what are you questioning right now that is accepted by society? That's accepted by society. And you know what? You actually answered it a little bit earlier in your industry of the well, working even, even for hours. Even right now, like this grind, grind, grind thing. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, well, it's trading the time, his trading time for, for dollars. So actually, sure. so when, when I said a second ago, like, welcome to the, you know, 2018 version of Leonardo da Vinci, that's, this is the point. Like, yeah. so many different traits that you exhibit tie into a Leonardo da Vinci, tie into Leonardo da Vinci, right? You actually, if you actually go back and ponder through this particular podcast or show, how many different things that you said, which were you questioning what's currently going on or questioning thoughts that you had about yourself or um, not fitting into what somebody thought you may fit in. So I think it's um, right. Like that's the whole thing. He's the conversation around grind, mm -hmm. that grind, grind, that's grind. The thing that the one that really sticks out for me that I haven't mentioned is emotions and how emotions actually fuel your personal sense of confidence and certainty when my society told me to stuff that mm. down that makes you weak. Mm, that's, I like how you said my society and not the society. Yeah, because, I mean, we all grow up in different environments. Right. Like there, I, I can talk to my buddy Jonathan. His environment was very much be vulnerable. You know, we were talking about sadness. Like I, I've over this year of 2018, I went on a journey to learn how to befriend anger and understand anger is not bad. Anger in of itself is nothing more than God expressing through me, and I can leverage that rather than react to it. Totally, total podcast in itself. Yes. But the one that I haven't befriended, and it's not because I don't want to, is sadness. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a culture where men and women do not cry. You go to a funeral, what do you wear? Are you supposed to, I mean, typically black? wear black? Yes, sunglasses. Oh. Wear sunglasses. Oh, yes. Do not let another human being see you cry. Really? Wow. It's dead serious. I would have failed. Dead serious. Now, the tears are running down, but every, sure, sure, everybody sure. in my family would have sunglasses. And to this day, the next person that dies, everybody in my family will have sunglasses on. Does it matter if it's not sunny outside? Does it matter if it's nighttime? Don't like, show weakness. You do not show weakness. Well, mm. and it's not, and they're linking crying with weakness. That's yes, the crazy that, part. Exactly. That's the crazy part. Right. Okay. So, what am I questioning? Hmm. How can I befriend? All of me, mm -hmm. my deepest sadness, not like the, I have a tear, but how can I get to a place where I'm okay if I wanted to, if I felt grief, huh? full on sobbing, heaving that I'm okay in it and I'm okay in it with another person, right? Right. Anger, sexuality, all of it. How can I befriend all of it and yet still live in integrity with my core values? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's awesome. So things to do at home. Now that you're a dad. Um, how do you and Sarah see yourselves creating an environment for your daughter to be her own mm. unique form of Da Vinci? That's a really good question. So, um, Sarah and I have talked about a lot, uh, this a lot. So one, I've already pulled her human design chart. So. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. Of course you did. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he did like he, that day. Yeah, of course. Of course. I knew it. Like that night. The minute she was born. Okay, go ahead. Um, so it's really our goal is doing our very best to understand who she is and facilitate her expression. That's beautiful. That's it. I so mean, like if she wants to go to school, go to school. If she wants a private tutor, then we'll hire a private tutor. But um, it's really just creating an environment to nurture her expression within the confines of the values that I believe are important. Right. That um, totally makes sense. So we like to always do this thing, get a little homework. What things do you tell your clients to do to embrace their raging rebel that our audience can do at home? Can we have a different question that is more specific? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, here, let me, let me help. Well, basically, it's just a homework question. I, I want to I give them a very good uh, yeah. question. So that's, just yes. give them whatever so you just, think. Yeah, just well, I, so them. your question was, 
what things do I tell the clients to embrace their raging rebel? Can you define raging rebel for me in the context of what you're really want pa- well like the way the way Janica described so purpose it. to embody pa- what passion I tell them to, to do to, em- to embrace their passion and purpose a couple of things number one get clear on your top core values your top five uh, one of my favorite exercises is just going to google type in like top 50 core values and find a list of like top 50 core values go through that intuitively select like the top 20 and then start from the top and work your way to the bottom and do a contrasting values exercise. That way you're not living your mother's values, you're not embodying your father's values, your husband's values, your wife's values, you're embodying your values. Because at the end of the day, that's the guidepost of your purpose, of mm-hmm. your passion. Otherwise we're always looking externally and they're like, well, why do I feel unfulfilled? I'm like, I'm doing these things, I've achieved success, I've achieved this or that. Well, maybe you're abiding by your mom's values or your dad's mm-hmm. values or grandparents' values or the society's values or whatever, rather than being clear on what are your values. So contrasting values exercises, let's just use like money and health. You know, some people will be like, oh, I don't want love is my top value. Love is not my top value. I guarantee you. Health is probably my top value when I did this exercise, if I'm honest. So let's, let's use love. So we'll go contrasting values. I can be sitting in a hammock in Thailand with maggots eating my leg because I have a broken leg and my health is completely diminished, but I can love everybody around me. Or would I rather have a full body where I can walk and express myself as a human being and kind of be an asshole? For me, I'd rather be the asshole and be healthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That may change at some point, but that would be, does that mean that I'm always the asshole? No, this means I'm being honest. I'm aligning with the truth. I value health over love. And I keep working my way down that list until I find my top But hold on. Five. You valuing health over love, that's actually just playing into Maslow. Yeah, it is. See how, see how smart I am sometimes? <laughs> You're so smart. Like I have like smart. five buzzwords that when I can use them, they like, they're perfect. But this is physiological needs and it then is. the needs of safety and then love. Sure. So when I did this exercise with Gary, it was really hard for me. But I had to get beyond that and be like, I'm just going to ignore the, the Maslow's, the, the safety, the health and all that because... Yeah, those are you can't be anything. But no, this is a great experiment. This is a great homework assignment, right? It's an awesome homework assignment. Because, because it took me a long, long time. So let's step. And yeah, it does. mine was love. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. It's so good. And no, I worked on it a lot, and it really sure. did. No, it's beautiful because the, there is no right or wrong. Right. And that's what that's the thing that I want to anchor for you guys for the homework assignments. There's no right or wrong. Who's to tell you that love should be your top value? Who's to tell yeah. you that you know? Uh, money was one of my t- wealth was one of my top values there was a piece of me that's like oh you're not very enlightened or conscious having i like money it's a big driver of who i am so why would i deny that yes. aspect of me there's no yes. right or wrong there's many paths just pick your path whatever is right for you and live with integrity with those values yeah and when you do the exercise like you ask when you do it with those questions and right. the scenarios of the maggots or whatever you really yes. make that that's when it becomes really clear yes that's what did it. Because the first time I went through it, I was like, oh, da 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 so simple. Yep. And then he pushed me on it and put me in scenarios. I'm like, well, fuck this. I don't want to do this. Yep. And I did it until he made me come back and do it. Awesome. Like, oh, awesome. And hard. how did that exercise change your life? So we can anchor for these people listening. It really just made it clear to me that I am. I, when people say, oh, you're too nice or you're doing that out of this or whatever, I'm like, no, that is just who I am. I cannot be that person that expresses some sort of, I don't know, whatever, anything, if it conflicts with who I feel I am with love. And for me, everything is about love. You can't earn money without love. I'd be willing to bet that when you live in it with integrity, with those values, now that you're clear on them, you actually feel and experience a deeper sense of purpose on a daily basis. Oh, absolutely. Which is the whole point of this. It's like you asked me, What is the exercise that you would have somebody do Mm -hmm. to embrace their purpose at a day on a daily basis? Passionately, right? Passionately. This exercise, if you take it and do the work and it is a painful, excruciating Mm -hmm. exercise, but most people don't take the time to do it. And as a result, that's why they settle for mediocrity. And by the way, if you're cool with mediocrity, that's okay. (laughs) Don't do the exercise. But if you want to live a life that where you're embracing passion and purpose, this is a pathway for you to be on your path. Yeah. I love it. I just want to call out one thing that, that you've heard a lot today and maybe didn't pay attention to it or didn't notice. 
is AJ's resistance to using right and wrong or good and bad. And I, I actually, this is, I learned this. I started to learn this with uh, one of my friends named Ginger. I think everybody has met Ginger mm-hmm. Reed like two, two years ago, three years ago. Um, but also with you, working with you a lot, which is this concept. It's not right or wrong. It's isn't an alignment with what you want to do. And that's, it's such a different, different thing for many of us because so many of us, we use the terms like, oh, you, even they describe kids like this. Yeah. From the beginning, you'll use terms like, Oh, that baby is such a good baby, right? Right? Or, or, or what does that mean? So then, 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 if she didn't act like the way I want her to act, then she would be bad, right? right? Or the conversation around actions is your business model good or bad depends on what you want to do, and it's just whether it's in alignment. So then, then your actions become well, is that in al- alignment or not? I've had, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's a really interesting point, and I really want you to ponder that. And, and as you think back on what this podcast was about or the different parts of the show is how much AJ doesn't say good or bad and how much he doesn't say right or wrong and how much it's all about what you want to accomplish. And that's it. And if you are happy with where you're at, that's awesome. And he literally means it. And I know so many people that mean that they're like, that's okay. But when you decide you want to change, then we start asking, well, you know, for what is it, whatever, whatever. And then you start looking at your actions by saying, well, does this really align with what I want to do or not? It's not that the action in and of itself is bad. Exactly. Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set <laughs> you free. Align with the truth. That's like it. it's a simple concept, but it's painful sometimes to align with the truth. It doesn't say, yeah, align, you know, the good align with the or, truth or if the it's right, comfortable right. or if it's convenient. That's he it. said, align with the truth and That's it will it. set you free. So my name is Ava Nadimi. I'm Janica Morton. And I'm Anthony John Amix. How do they reach out to you? Oh, yeah. Very simple. Just go to the website, ajamyx.com, A-J-A-M-Y-X.com, or just go connect with me on Facebook, facebook.com slash AJAMX. Uh, and his phone number is two. No, just joking. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Becoming the beach. The beach. So we're going to put this out there. If you know anybody that should be covered on this show, please let us know. You know, we're looking for people that are innovative. You know, whether they have a business or not, maybe they're a school teacher. Uh, maybe they're just that cool um, grandma down the street that has just really figured out how to make amazing tomatoes grow in her backyard. So we're looking for self-directed learners. We're looking for innovators, uh, innovative people who are always learning and trying new things. So please reach out to us at hello at becomingdavinciShow.com. Join us next time as we learn more about Leonardo and modern day entrepreneurs. Becoming Da Vinci. Da Vinci.